Hello world, it's Dave. And your boy Jacob. Here to talk about the brand new fastest desktop graphics card in the world, the NVIDIA Titan RTX. Yeah, no, we don't have one. We're a gaming site and we don't have enough influence from a global standpoint to just be gifted one. And you upset NVIDIA with your RTX 2080 review. Yeah, and I upset NVIDIA with my RTX 2080 review. See where your integrity gets you. Yes, NVIDIA has released the Turing Generations Titan in the Titan RTX. A card which takes the full fat TU-102 GPU and packs it under a gold-plated shroud with a metric ton of GDDR6 graphics memory. It's a bit of a backwards move in terms of the way Nvidia has usually done the Titan Ti dance in the past. Traditionally the Titan would have been the first time a nominally consumer level desktop graphics card was fitted with what had previously been a professional only GPU. Then, a little while later, when the shine had worn off and the fools and their money had been easily parted, NVIDIA would then launch the TI card using the same GPU, but minus a few cooler cores and maybe a touch less video memory. Not so with the Titan RTX. It's here making the $6,000 you'd spend on a Quadro RTX 6000 look even more ridiculous than it previously did, and the $1,200 sticker price of the RTX 2080 Ti suddenly look almost reasonable. Almost. Mm. The Titan RTX is $2,400 and comes with that TU-102 GPU, sporting 4,608 CUDA cores, 576 Tensor cores and 72 RT cores for all those AI ray tracing good times. It's also got 24GB of GDDR6 video memory, delivering 672GB of bandwidth, a 13 phase power supply, NVLink support, a big old vapour chamber, twin axial fans with 13 blades each and a diamond cut aluminium frame, or aluminium. So that all means the RTX 2080 Ti has been relegated to second fiddle on the Turing GPU ladder, which is surely going to upset some people, right? Well, it shouldn't. The RTX 2080 Ti is still the best gaming graphics card, even if it's not exactly the ultimate PC GPU. The Titan RTX is another $1,200 more expensive and only has 6% more CUDA cores. That's a smaller percentage difference than there was between the Titan XP and the GTX 1080 Ti. And look what the performance difference was between them. Nothing. Or it was practically nothing. Well, at anything other than 4K. If you looked at the very highest game settings, you could maybe see a 10% performance delta. So 10% higher frames for another $1,200. Yeah, it all makes the RTX 2080 Ti seem rather good value, doesn't it? Well, no, not, not really. Uh, but it does seem that any gamer with an ounce of sense will see that the Titan RTX isn't a GPU that makes any sense going near an actual gaming PC. As Nvidia told us, it's very much for deep learning developers and AI researchers who work with larger neural networks and datasets. So for gamers, the RTX 2080 Ti is still the premier card. But there's no doubting releasing the cards this way around does take some of the shine off the RTX 2080 Ti. Something that has been putting some shine back on the GeForce RTX cards, however, is the improvements we're seeing in real-time ray tracing. We were already pretty impressed with the performance of the 2080 Ti in the first Battlefield 5 benchmarks, but the recent Tides of War Overture update has had a pretty significant impact on Nvidia's ray tracing performance. Yeah, by working closely together, DICE and Nvidia have been optimising the ray tracing implementation of Battlefield 5 since launch. They haven't limited the number of rays being cast in order to boost performance, in fact they've actually increased the amount of rays they shoot when they move from the low to the ultra DXR settings. They've also introduced variable rate ray tracing, which is roughly analogous to the variable rate shading Nvidia introduced with Turing. It effectively means that only the surfaces in a scene which will genuinely reflect will have focused rays cast at them. They've also fixed a bug where destruction was really tanking performance, and nixed the over-the-top ray tracing on foliage too. Nobody needs that many leaves appearing in puddles. All this means that the 2080 Ti now delivers over 60 FPS on average at 1440p with Ultra and Ultra DXR settings enabled. It was posited that the RTX 2080 would similarly top 60 FPS at 1440p, but with Ultra and Medium DXR settings. But in our testing, the 2080 only hit 46 FPS, with the low DXR setting the only one to offer 64. That's not quite the performance that Nvidia was promising, but the free performance uptick is still more than welcome, and shows that both Team Green and DICE are committed to making ray tracing work. And they do both say that they're only now scratching the surface of the optimizations available, so it could get even better. So yeah, the Nvidia Titan RTX might be the ultimate PC GPU, but the RTX 2080 Ti is still the top-end gaming graphics card of this generation, and we're even getting a whole new level of ray tracing performance upgrades for it and its brethren, all for free too. Yeah, in the only game to actually ship with any real-time ray tracing in it. Yes, in the only RTX game around. 
Yeah. Well, thanks for watching and give us some of that like sub bell magic and check back here and on PCGamesN.com for more PC gaming and hardware shenanigans. Thanks for watching. Cheers.